Let's continue our discussion regarding average power by looking first at uh, the average power delivered to a resistor. And to begin with, let's just remind ourselves what uh, what the voltage or the power calculations were for a DC source. Well, in a DC source, of course, the voltage is just V, and the current, using Ohm's law, is V over R. So then the power in a DC source is equal to I times V, which is V over R times V, which is V squared over R. When we have a, an AC or a sinusoidally varying voltage instead of a constant voltage, our voltage will be sinusoidal. The current associated with that voltage across the resistor will be just the voltage divided by the resistance, which is Vp cosine omega t divided by R. The instantaneous power, V of t times I of t, will be Vp times Vp or Vp squared cosine squared of omega t over R. That's the instantaneous power. To find the, the average power, we need to integrate this term. Well, it's a lot easier to integrate that term if we use a trig substitute or a trig identity and replace the cosine squared of omega t with 1 over 2 times 1 plus the cosine of 2 omega t, and then integrate that. So we're integrating from 0 to t. The cosine of 2t has a period of t over 2. So during the period of time from 0 to t, it, this term goes through two complete cycles. Nevertheless, it still has no con it makes no contribution to the average power. We're left with, and then in this integral, the constant Vp squared over 2r, which comes outside the integral, integrating, and we end up with, then, the average power delivered to a resistor by an AC voltage source of peak voltage Vp equaling one-half of Vp squared over R. For reasons that will become immediately obvious, let's take this 1 over 2 and write it as 1 over the square root of 2 times 1 over the square root of 2. And take one of those factors of square root of 2 in the denominator and place it under each of the V sub P terms. V peak, the value V peak over the square root of 2, which is the same as 0 0.707 times V peak, is what we refer to as the effective voltage or the RMS voltage. When we make that change and write our average power expression in terms of the effective voltage rather than the peak voltage, we get the same expression for power in an AC source as we got for power with a DC source. In other words, if we use the effective voltage instead of the peak voltage, we will calculate the same power that we would, or we will get the same power that we would have gotten if we used a DC source of Vp over the square root of 2. How do we understand that? Well, during the cycle, the voltage oscillates from positive Vp to negative V sub P. And in fact, it's only at its maximum value, maximum positive value or maximum negative value, instantaneously. The rest of the time, its value of voltage is somewhere between those two. And in fact, two times during the cycle, the voltage is actually zero. At those two instances of time when the voltage is zero, there is no power being delivered to the resistor. This AC voltage is able to effectively deliver only 0 0.707 times its peak value of power. So for example, an AC source with a peak voltage of 10 volts delivers as much power to an AC or to a resistor as a DC source would that was set to or DC value of 0 0.707 times VP or a 10 volt AC signal will deliver the same as a DC signal of 0 0.707 times 10 or 7.07 .07 volts. Thus its effective voltage is 0 0.707 times its peak value. We have then this situation. 
the current and the voltage are synchronized with each other. They're both positive at the same time, giving us positive power. They're both negative at the same time, giving us positive power. So the instantaneous power, this red line, oscillates from a maximum value to zero, but it remains positive the entire time. The average power, then, is the average of this, which we found the average power to be one-half V peak squared over R, and that was equal to one-half of the DC, or the power that the DC source would deliver to that resistor. The voltage that we use to calculate that average power if written as its effective voltage, the power then turned out to be the effective squared over R.